So, in self phase modulation we talked about a frequency propagating through the fiber giving rise to a uh, nonlinear refractive index and that uh, n became n naught plus n 2 i and this resulted in increase in uh, spectral content of uh, omega itself right. Now, what happens if you go in with two frequencies? I have omega 1, I have omega 2. I combine these two frequencies and propagate through the fiber. I have simultaneous transmission of two frequencies through the fiber. So, this is the model here. You have uh, electric field is E 1 uh, z e power j omega 1 minus beta 1 z. This is the first uh, field propagating, this is the second field propagating plus the complex conjugate. Uh, what is a nonlinear response? It is half uh, epsilon naught chi 3, the whole raised to the power uh, 3. So, you have 1, 2, 3 and 4 terms. Uh, so, the algebra is slightly more complicated, but it is not too much. You just have to use the expansion a plus c plus d plus d the whole cube, write down all the terms. Uh, I will not derive this completely, but this is a easy enough expansion that you can work it out you will definitely get uh, a term 3 omega 1 a cube term. You will also get a term 3 omega 2. There is a term which corresponds to omega 1. There are in fact, there are two contributions to omega 1 nonlinear contributions to omega 1. There are two nonlinear contributions to omega 2. Then there is a contribution with a frequency 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 with a corresponding phase 2 beta 1 minus beta 2. There is this contribution 2 omega 2 minus omega 1 with a corresponding phase 2 beta 2 minus beta 1. Then there is a 2 omega 1 plus omega 2 and a 2 omega 2 plus omega 1 with a corresponding phase 2 beta 1 plus beta 2, 2 beta 2 plus beta 1. So, and plus the complex conjugate of all this. So, this is the expansion a simple algebraic expansion. But these terms gives us lot of insights to what is actually happening in the system. So, all what you did was to send two frequencies with a slightly larger uh, power so that you can start seeing the nonlinear effects. Now, we can start interpreting this. It means that the induced polarization has of course, a linear response. In addition to that, it has a nonlinear response and at what frequencies you have frequencies corresponding to the third harmonic generation. And you see the third harmonic generation 3 omega 1 should be generated exactly with a phase 3 beta 1. So, it requires phase matching. Again, we will talk about phase matching a little later. Uh, there are frequencies omega 1 and omega 2 which are corresponding to self phase modulation. So, the coefficients you see 3 mod e square e 1 square e 1, this was exactly similar to self phase modulation. Here again, you have another term contributing to oscillation at omega 2 a nonlinear term which also has an intensity which corresponds to that of uh, self phase modulation 3 mod e square uh, e 2. But for omega 1 frequency you now have another contribution whose strength is decided by e 2. Omega 1 frequency has another contribution whose strength is decided by the e 2 which is the electric field amplitude of the second frequency. Similarly, there is a contribution to omega 2 oscillation because of E 1 which is the electric field strength of omega 1 right. So, there is a cross term happening and this is refers to referred to as cross phase modulation. And why do I call these two are all as phase matched? Because you see their phase is corresponding to that of omega 1 whereas, if you see here uh, you have a 3 omega frequency, let us say 3 omega 1, we call it as some omega third harmonic frequency, uh, let us call it as omega 3 frequency. I should have had a phase corresponding to that of omega 3, instead I am having a phase 3 beta 1. So, we will see what is the consequence of that a bit later. But the most interesting thing is similar to self phase modulation, there are these additional contributions because of the co propagating frequencies. Self phase modulation is because of the intensity of that specific uh, frequency, but now what we are saying is that there is a contribution uh, to omega 1 because of the strength of 
omega 2 that is co-propagating. Similarly, the strength, uh, the, the refractive index gets modified uh, and the oscillation at omega 2 has now an additional contribution from a co-propagating frequency omega 1. So, that is where it is called cross phase modulation. And of course, there are these additional frequencies generated which is 2 omega 1 minus omega 2, 2 omega 2 minus omega 1 and so on. These are uh, called as 4 wave mixing and it requires phase matching. We will talk about why it is called 4 wave mixing and why it what is this phase matching in the module related to 4 wave mixing. What happens in a communication system? So, you have this as let us say in omega 1 carrier frequency, this is omega 2 carrier frequency. Because of this cross phase modulation, the nonlinear term, this is the self phase modulation, gamma p l was a self phase modulation. In addition to that, you have, you see the coefficient here was 3, here it is 6. So, uh, similarly, if I work out similarly for the nonlinear contribution, it is going to be 2 p 2. So, this corresponds to the cross phase modulation. It means that, so for example, if this is p 1 and this is p 2, the nonlinear phase experienced by uh, the pulse 1. So, this, this, this guy will experience a nonlinear phase which is uh, gamma p 1 l corresponding to its self phase modulation plus gamma 2 p 2 l corresponding to cross phase modulation. Similarly, this guy will experience gamma p 2 l plus 2 times gamma p 1 L corresponding to uh, cross phase modulation. So, the intensity of the wave affects the wave, uh, the phase of the co propagating wave. Uh, omega 1, omega 2, why is it relevant? Different channels of a WDM system will now start talking to each other. So, they generate a frequency chirp, and this is highly detrimental for phase modulated data. So, you do not really wish to have cross phase modulation in your system. We move on to four wave mixing. This expansion is the same as what we did for cross phase modulation. You see the, I am just repeating the same expansion, but now we will focus on these terms 2 omega 2 minus 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 and 2 omega 2 minus omega 1. Now, these are unlike self phase modulation and cross phase modulation, these are additional frequency terms generated in the system. Okay? And four way mixing in general refers to mixing of three frequencies to generate a fourth frequency. Here we do not have uh, 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 three frequencies mixing, we have only two frequencies mixing, but the general form is omega i plus omega j minus omega k will give you omega l. Right? So, this is the general formulation uh, of four way mixing. Why did we stop at three mixing terms? Because we are talking about epsilon naught chi 3 uh, E cube. So, the idea is that each of these frequencies, uh, each of these electric field terms could be of different frequencies, could be of independent frequencies. That is the case which is uh, corresponding to what is called as the non-degenerate case, where each of the electric fields are having completely different uh, frequencies. So, they can mix to generate a term which looks like omega i plus j minus k, where i j k can run from 1, 2, 3, right? And it can give you a new frequencies omega l. But in the specific example we considered, we did not have three frequencies, we had only two frequencies mixing, which is why we have 2 omega 1 minus omega 2. So, this is called as a partially degenerate uh, case for four way mixing. Um, now, we will talk a little bit more of phase matching. So, what is the physical interpretation of phase matching? So, this is the picture that I have drawn omega 1, omega 2, uh, omega 3, which is at 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 frequency, and omega 4 is at 2 omega 2 minus uh, omega 1 frequency. Uh, let us try to visualize what this phase matching is about. Uh, let us consider the generation of omega 3 for example, uh, which is 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 and this generation happens all along the length of the fiber. It is not that at the input uh, you have this induced polarization and that is it. No, as the electric field propagates all through the length of the fiber, the whole phenomena is happening. So, let us consider omega 1 getting generated, uh, uh, omega 1 propagating through the uh, uh, length of the fiber. Uh, omega 2 which is in this picture, it has shown that omega 2 is greater than omega 1. So, you have a higher frequency also simultaneously propagating in the fiber. Uh, omega 3 which is smaller than omega 1 is actually getting generated all along the length of the fiber. So, I am just looking at certain locations 
in the fiber. So, the point we are trying to make is that let us say uh, omega 3 got generated at this location and this generated uh, light now we are looking at it as a function of z. So, the generated light is also propagating in space and let us say it, re it reached this uh, specific location which I have marked here. Now, at this point also there is an omega 3 that is gen getting generated until unless the new gen newly generated omega 3 is in phase with the previously propagated omega 3 unless that happens there is destructive interference. So, omega 3 can get constructively generated and it can survive in the fiber only when the phase at every point that it is generated corresponds to the propagation phase, propagation phase of omega 3. Now, what is the propagation phase of omega 3? Omega 3 has a frequency 2 omega 1 minus omega 2. Okay. Its propagation phase is beta at omega 3 which is 2 pi by lambda times n at omega 3. Okay. Now, this has to match with 2 beta 1 minus beta 2. Where is this 2 beta 1 minus beta 2? Where did this come from? If you look at 2 omega 1 minus omega 2, its phase is 2 beta 1 minus beta 2. So, unless beta at omega 3 is unless beta at omega 3 is identically equal to 2 beta 1 minus beta 2, where beta 1 is beta at omega 1 and beta 2 is beta at omega 2 unless this happens there is destructive interference. So, what is the condition for that? Uh, so, this 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 beta at omega 3 is what is written as omega 3 by c n of omega 3 uh, is um, beta at omega 1 is uh, of course, this 2 corresponds to this 2 omega 1 by c n at omega 1 and beta at omega 2 is omega 2 by c n at omega 2. So, this would correspond this will uh, get satisfied in general for any frequencies only when your um, n at omega 3 is equal to uh, n at omega 1 is equal to n at omega 2 which means that you are demanding that the refractive index at all the frequencies are identical, but that is not the case the fiber is dispersive we know that there is a certain dispersion in the fiber because of which the, uh, the, the, the refractive index because of the material dispersion waveguide dispersion there is a certain total dispersion because of which the propagation phase cannot be matched this way right. So, uh, how do you so there is a certain phase mismatch and what is that phase mismatch phase mismatch is the difference between beta at omega 3 minus what it is supposed to be, what it ought to be. It ought to be 2 omega 1, 2 beta uh, at omega 1 minus omega 2. So, that is a phase mismatch. Ideally, you would want this phase mismatch to be 0 or if this phase mismatch is 2 pi is also fine or if this phase mismatch uh, is uh, multiples of 2 pi is also fine, right. So, this uh, how do I now actually quantify this phase mismatch? Uh, knowing the dispersion of the fiber. So, I know that the dispersion of the fiber as a function of lambda is this. So, uh, you have omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 and omega 4. So, omega 1 corresponds to lambda 1. Let us say this is omega 2, this is omega 3 and this is omega 4. Um, you know the beta 2, you know the d. How do I now quantify this in terms of the known parameters of the fiber? So, for that you assume that the mixing frequencies are in the linear region of d versus lambda just like how we assumed for dispersion compensation. Uh, you carry out the Taylor expansion for each of these betas about the 0 dispersion wavelength, the 1300 nanometer at which uh, the dispersion is 0. Uh, you work out the same Taylor expansion what we had worked out earlier. It will turn out that after substitution delta beta is equal to beta 2 times omega square where this capital omega is now the spacing between omega 1 and omega 2. So, larger is the spacing, larger is the phase mismatch. It means that when the two frequencies are very close to each other, the phase mismatch is almost going to be 0 and then you have the four way mixing products coming up with uh, very good intensity. If they are not phase matched, 
it means that there is destructive interference in the generation of the frequencies along the fiber. At the end you do not really have any new additional frequencies coming up in the system and then there is no problem. So, as far as a communication system is considered, if your WDM channels are very far apart, then the dispersion uh, in the fiber takes care of the fact that, so, so you have a certain beta 2 in the fiber, okay. If you have a certain beta 2 in the fiber, uh, and then because beta 2 is non-zero at 1550 nanometer, that is helping you because if beta 2 were 0, it means that delta beta is 0 and so you will always have 4 way mixing. But because beta 2 is non-zero, only for omega which are very capital omega which are which is very small which means that the two frequencies are very close to each other only then you will have a uh, phase mismatch close to zero and hence you will have large four way mixing. So, as far as a communication system goes having a dispersion is good uh, having a dispersion is good to the extent that it will reduce uh, four way mixing. But having a dispersion is not good because you have to worry about dispersive chirp and dispersion compensation and so on. Okay. So, propagation uh, uh, using a uh, zero dispersion wavelength uh, or making a fiber with uh, zero dispersion at 1500 nanometer is not a good idea simply because uh, when the dispersion goes to zero, you will have this phase mismatch, the nonlinear phase mismatch to be non-zero which means that even at very low powers you will start having the four way mixing components uh, coming up uh, with very good efficiencies and that is very detrimental for a WDM system. So, having a small dispersion is always good for long distance communication. Okay? So, uh, of course, we talked about this, this is critical the transfer uh, because uh, in a WDM system because this results in transfer of power from one channel to the other. So, how does four way mixing affect our communication system? So, imagine that we have a, a WDM system where information is sent in multiple channels. Uh, what we are saying is that uh, these signals can potentially undergo four way mixing and result in frequencies that are uh, appearing at uh, what are called as these side bands. So, uh, for example, these two frequencies can mix to generate here, these two frequencies would mix to generate here, uh, these three frequencies can mix, uh, remember you had the in general omega 1 plus omega 2 minus uh, omega i plus omega j minus omega k and that uh, mixing uh, generates additional uh, power in WDM systems and that is very detrimental.